Um, as, as, as Warwick said, the Australian dairy industry has been through a rough couple of years. We've, um, in the recent past, seen pretty low world commodity prices negatively impacting profitability throughout the supply chain, sitting on top of longer running trends, structural trends in Australia and abroad. Um, those trends have sometimes been painful and they're yet to completely play themselves out. So that, that being said, our, our core forecast for the next few years is to be better than the last few in terms of farm gate pricing in Australia. Um, for those of you who attended the farm performance session um, just before, you would have heard that dairy farm incomes have already increased considerably in the year just gone as a result of a, um, a lift in, in milk prices. You can read all about our outlook in detail in our just released agricultural commodities publication. R rather than rehash the whole thing to you in detail today, what I'd like to do is, is briefly present our key expectations around Australian milk pricing and supply before moving beyond that core scenario for the dairy sector to highlight a couple of potential risks on the supply side of the market. Those, those are the role of the EU skim milk powder stockpile, the direction of the Australian dollar over the next few years and, and slightly more long term, the, the changing uh, structure of the southern irrigation market. So I, I won't spend too much time on the demand story today because we consider that the outlook for dairy demand is, is pretty stable, stable and reasonably positive. There's, there's been a heap of in industry um, commentary over the last little while along the lines of de world demand is expected to grow at one to two percent a year, not too many risks. We we're broadly in that camp as well, we'd agree with that assessment. We, we don't see any large upside or downside risks to world dairy demand or at least high probability <laughs> risks, which is nice because big shifts in demand have been a considerable source of volatility over the last few years. So that means producers and processors can, can be reasonably confident of finding a pretty settled market for their products. And this, this fairly settled situation is reflected in our forecast for, for dairy commodities. This works. Sorry. Please forgive me. Tech awareness is poor. Right, so on the commodity price front, we're, we're forecasting a bit of a mixed bag depending on the production stream. But the, the takeaway is that we're expecting most of the dairy commodities to kind of lift up and stay out of that trough that we saw the last few years. We, we aren't expecting any stunning price growth, but it's, it's, you know, it's up a little bit. That's reflected in our expectations around farm gate milk pricing here in Australia. The obvious exception is skim milk powder, which I'll come back to in a moment. In, in real terms, our expectation for farm gate milk prices is to be basically flat in real terms over the next five years. They're not as low as they have been recently, but unlikely to reach the highs that we've seen now and then over the last decade. It's, it's not a wonderful outlook, but it's also not, you know, it's not terrible. We, we expect some additional price support to come from competition for milk, particularly in the southern region, and also from a falling Australian dollar, which I'll, I'll speak about in a, in a little bit. So we think if, if prices can be maintained around this 46 to 48 cents a litre, or uh, $6.10 to $6.40 per kilo of milk solids, for those of you who prefer that measure, that, that will provide enough incentive to pr for producers to be looking to expand their outlook, their output. So as a result, we're forecasting a steady increase in supply, getting Australia back to production levels that we saw just a few years ago by the end of our medium term outlook period in 2022-23. That this outlook obviously is, is weather permitting, as it always is. We're aware that some commentators are a little bit more bullish on the milk supply than we are. I've seen projections ranging up to and above 10 billion litres by the end of the same period. I, I'm simply going to note that we're not quite that bullish on supply. But now, now we've covered that, it's time to consider a couple of alternatives to our core forecast. These are situations which we don't assess as being as likely as the outcomes I've just spoken about, but they're nonetheless worth considering because the implications, as hopefully I'll convince you, uh, can be quite serious for Australian dairy. So now you saw before that we expect skim milk powder prices to remain very low, and that's largely because of this, the EU skim milk powder stockpile. So this is, a, this is a warehouse somewhere in Belgium with 12,500 tonnes of skim milk powder bags sitting in it, which is a few weeks' worth of production in Australia. All over Europe, the European Commission holds nearly 400,000 tonnes, which is about 18 months' production for Australia. So what happens to this stockpile is the first big risk and the big unknown for the world dairy market. So that these stockpiles appear now and then in the EU, um, resulting from the EC's market intervention scheme operating. This is the biggest one in decades, as you can see. 
a good deal of that powder is now reaching an age where it's going to have to be sold if it's going to be useful for um, consumer markets to top this situation off. Farm grade pricing in the European Union right at the moment is currently encouraging more milk production, which is adding, adding to these supplies. So the European Commission has recently announced changes to this scheme, which should result in more powder hitting the open market, which our core price forecast does already take into account. Um, we also think that this stockpile is going to have to begin to get eliminated. Without doing that, the European Commission is going to be incurring um, gigantic losses on the purchases, and they've, they've said as much. They want to get rid of this thing as, as much as everyone does. The last two, dr two drawdown events have lasted about two years. We expect this event will last a little bit longer, given the size of this stockpile and the state of the world skim milk um, market. We think it'll take a little bit longer. That's going to have significant effects on the world market over the next two to three years. Following the elimination of this stockpile, we think skim milk powder pricing is going to return to well, I won't say normal, but better, you know, higher levels. It'll improve anyway. But um, one, of the, one of the risks is if these changes to the scheme don't work um, as intended and that, that stockpile continues to build, we think that if that happened, that would depress skim milk powder prices um, for lower and even longer. Uh, that would provide an even greater incentive for European Union processes to shift into cheese production, which would depress prices on the cheese market which would be very bad for Australia. We're obviously geared heavily towards cheese production and exports, um, and we're investing in increased cheese capacity here. So let's, let's move a little bit closer to home um, and just talk briefly about the Australian dollar. So a, a falling dollar improves the competitiveness of our dairy exports in the world market, and that, that can offset the effect of the falling commodity prices um, within, within reason. Our expectation, as Steve outlined this morning, is that the Australian dollar will gradually fall to around 74 US cents over the, uh, the next couple of years, and then remain at that level over the medium term. That, that expectation comes from um, us, us expecting that Australian terms of trade will gradually fall over the same period because of lower iron ore and coal prices resulting from higher supplies of those things in the world market and weaker Chinese demand. We also think that the US Federal Reserve will continue tightening monetary policy, which will pu push up US interest rates above Australia. So that, that all, that all pr puts uh, downward pressure on the Australian dollar. So we think that do uh, falling dollar will provide a lot of support for farm gate milk pricing over the next few years. So here we can see a collection of um, our ABES model predictions, which take that falling dollar into account, am among a, a bunch of other things, as well as our current forecast for farm gate milk prices. Obviously not all forecasters agree on the direction of the dollar or on, on milk prices. There's a number of um, somewhat bearish forecasts in the market at the moment for milk, farm gate milk prices and they tend to incorporate an expectation that the Australian dollar will be rising and not falling over, over this same period. I'm, I'm aware of forecasts for the dollar that have it going above 80 cents and then maybe a little bit further north and staying at that level. So if we plug that assumption instead into our models, um, we can see what happens. So we, in that situation, we'd see falling farm gate prices for three to four years and then settling around perhaps 42 cents a litre, which is uh, $5.60 per kilo of milk, milk solids, which is not far off the 16, 17 season low. In, in this scenario, uh, the incentive for producers to invest and expand milk production would be probably reduced. That in turn would put greater pressure on processors who have invested and are investing in expanded factory capacity. That would probably translate to stronger competition for a smaller milk pool, which will squeeze processor margins and require a lot more careful capacity management at, at some plants. So while we don't think that there's a high likelihood of the dollar appreciating like this and this situation eventuating, we can see that the implications um, could be quite serious. So it's well worth the industry considering that possibility. So the, the last thing I wanted to focus on was the role of um, irrigation water use in the southern Murray-Darling Basin and how that's changing over time. Um, right. So um, here we can see the red, the red line is uh, historical irrigation water use for pastures in the southern Murray-Darling Basin, which we can take as a proxy for dairy pasture grazing usage. This comes from ABARE's water trade model, which um, you can hear much more about in tomorrow's session on water markets, which Dave, Dave Galliano is going to be. Uh, delivering. So what I wanted to focus on is what, what this model tells us about dairies water use if instead of historical trends we substitute in today's demand conditions which is, which is that dark line. So we see that irrigation water usage by dairy farms would be noticeably reduced. That's largely because of changes in the industries using irrigation water in the southern Murray-Darling Basin with more cotton and more nuts going in. That leads to higher usage by those industries and lower usage by dairy and a few, a few other industries. 
So we can expect a future where the dairy industry will be using less irrigation water than it otherwise would be, which will have implications for fodder usage especially, which is one of the most significant input costs for producers, which we know. So that means the milk supply, especially farms targeting flatter milk supply curves, will have higher exposure to changes in water pricing and availability and feed costs than, than they used to. So th this is something the whole southern milk industry is going to have to come to terms with in managing the milk production system over, over the medium term. So, so to summarise, the major supply side risks we see on the, on the world market is the resolution of the European Union skim milk powder stockpile situation. Whereas at home, it's changing water use patterns and our export competitiveness via the level of the Australian dollar. Um, I'd like to again stress that our base case assumes that, that none of that will go wrong. Um, our core forecast, as I said, is for essentially flat but nonetheless favourable farm gate milk pricing over the medium term. But, but it's definitely worth thinking about these alternatives because the implications can be very serious for the Australian dairy industry, which has shown itself to be extremely resilient and innovative and attractive for investors both here and abroad. So it's an industry that we at ABEARS want to ensure is well informed and well prepared for the future and is thinking about all these scenarios. So whatever winds up happening, it's going to be an interesting five years ahead and hopefully we'll hear from our other speakers about, about what, how they see it. Um, thanks for listening.